um, call to order the regular business meeting of the Board of Education for Monday, February 25th. If I could ask everyone to please stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, roll call, please. Jim Batson. Yeah. Here. Pat Rudy. Here. Here. Kevin Huber. Scott Luce. Here. Karen Lundstedt. Casey Ruby. Here. Okay, so we know um, Kevin Huber and Karen Lundstedt out for the evening. Um, let's see, our agenda today, we will have, uh, we'll open it up briefly for anybody from the public who would like to speak. Uh, we'll have a brief um, student recognition tonight, it looks like. Uh, we'll have updates from our student school board representatives. And then our superintendent is ill this evening. Um, so filling in is Brian Kelly. He'll share some good news and give us updates on a number of capital projects. Um, we'll approve the consent vote agenda, which we re reviewed earlier this month in committee. We'll have a brief update from facilities and finance and program and personnel. And then uh, I'm not aware that we have anything on property, correct? And nothing on seed all, can IASB anything? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. okay. All right. So then uh, after the PMP meeting, we will adjourn. All right. Any questions, comments? Yes. All right. Would anybody from the public like to speak tonight? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's right. Because Karen's not here. All right. Can I ask you, Lisa, Secretary Pro Tem? That just means you have to sign off a bunch of stuff next week. Okay. Um, anybody from the public? Can't see that bar. Okay. All right, so none educational presentation, student recognition. The camera follows Dr. Tom Kulandes from the board table to the microphone. Good evening. Yep, yep. Good evening. I'm Tom Kulandes, principal of Libertyville High School. Um, President Crudy, since Prentice Lee is sick tonight, John and I would like to uh, propose a few changes if we could uh, run that by the agenda for, for this evening. Then. Boss is away, got some ideas. <laughs> um, we, oh, darn it, that's right. He's probably watching from home, too. Sorry, <laughs> Dennis. All right, so uh, we have a couple of uh, presentations tonight of some um, uh, fantastic wildcats, and we're going to start out with our wrestlers. Um, so I'm going to bring up our first year wrestling coach. Coach Dale Eggert, who is uh, going to make some presentations about two of our All-State wrestlers. Coach Coach Dale Eggert joins Dr. Kulantas at the microphone. Uh, it is always a thrill to, to be here for just one All-Stater, but this year we have two. I'm going to bring up Danny Pacino, Michael Gunther. Come on up, you guys. Danny, uh, second time uh, that he's earned all state. He got third, uh, second place. He got third place a year ago. He got second place this year. Close loss in the final. Michael Gunther, uh, three times down state. First time he placed, he got third in the uh, state of 138. Went four and one. Uh, very close decision in the semis. These guys really did us proud. Uh, Michael is off to the University of Illinois next year to wrestle for them. And he's got one more shot at the title, and then he goes off to the University of Illinois. So we got a nice connection with those guys. Thank you very much. The wrestlers and Coach Edgar shake hands and stand for a picture with Dr. Kulandas, Associate Superintendent, Brian Kelly, and School Board President, Pat Grudy. Tom Kulandas, LHS Principal, steps to the podium. Okay, so now we move from wrestling to our all-state theater students. Um, these students were selected as among the best uh, thespians in the state, both for on stage and for behind the stage. So I'm going to bring up our um, department supervisor for fine arts, Mr. Dustin Helby, and he's going to talk about our all-state theater students. 
Dustin Helge replaces Dr. Kulantes at the microphone. Good evening. The Illinois High School Theater Festival is the world's largest non-competitive theater festival in the world. So for three days in the first weekend of January, uh, we bring together educators, students, and theater professionals from across the state, actually from across the country, and they participate in workshops, showcase performances, and the highlight of the entire weekend is our all-state performance. And at Libertyville High School, we had three students who were selected for that production, uh, the first one being Albert Sterner in the ensemble in the Heights. Albert Sterner shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. Kulandes. Next we have Laura Hins, who is uh, part of the tech crew and did props for the production. Laura Hins shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. Kulandes. And last but not least was Clarice Austin, who was in the ensemble for In the Heights and dance captain. And in addition, I forgot this last year, so I'm going to mention it now and hopefully make up for it. She was also the dance captain for the production of Big Fish last year as well. So Clarice. Clarice Austin shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. Kulandes. The LHS All-State Theater students and fine arts director Dustin Halvey shake hands and stand for a picture with Dr. Kulandes, Associate Superintendent Brian Kelly, and School Board President Pat Grudy. Dr. Kulandes returns to the podium. All right, so from our All-State wrestlers and our All-State theater students, we now turn to our All-State musicians. And once again, Dustin Halvey. There you go. <laughs> Uh, before we go to music, um, I had forgotten to mention, in addition to our outstanding students, we actually had two District 128 uh, production staff members who are here with us tonight who are involved in In the Heights, and that is uh, Jen Phelan, who was the scenic designer, and also Kevin Holly, who was uh, the technical director for In the Heights. So maybe we can do a picture once we're all done with everybody, Vernon Hills, Libertyville together. So, uh, now on to music. Uh, the Illinois Music uh, Education Association uh, provides outreach and uh, advocacy events for our state as our professional organization. In addition to doing all those wonderful things for the professionals, they um, house uh, auditions for our musicians, district auditions. There are nine sites. All of our students auditioned, were selected for our district festival, and then from there, that district festival, they were selected for our all-state ensembles. And we have 12 students. Uh, first one is Elias Anderson. Sarah Donofrio. Elias Anderson shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. Kulandes. Sebastian Ingino was unable to attend tonight. Uh, David Lee. Jenna Donofrio shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. Kulandes. Matt Newberger. David Lee shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. Kulandes. Katie Olson was unable to attend tonight. Uh, Thomas Power was selected as our future music educator. Matt Newberger shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. Kulandes. Carter Smith. Okay. Um, you've seen this young man already. He's very talented, Albert Sterner. Karen Tarman. Albert Sterner shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. Kulandes. Kirsten Townander. And Richard Chow. Karen Tarman shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. Kulandes. Richard Jow shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. Kulandes. The LHS All-State Music Students and Fine Arts Director Dustin Halvey shake hands and stand for a picture with Dr. Kulandes, Associate Superintendent Brian Kelly, and School Board President Pat Grudy.
thank you very much. And I now turn it over to my colleague, John Gilliam. Thank you, Tom. So John Gilliam, Principal of Vernon Hills. Welcome, everybody. Uh, our pleasure to also highlight some of our students from our fine performing arts area. We'll start with our uh, musicians, both in voice and music, and then we'll move to our uh, all-state uh, theater festival kids. I was fortunate enough to be able to get down to uh, U of I and watch In the Heights this year, and it was a phenomenal show. Uh, and the kids that you'll see, that you've already seen from Libertyville and those you'll see from Vernon Hills, made District 128 proud for sure, uh, as, as did the musicians too. So, uh, Drew Russell, our department supervisor, is going to come up, let's do music, uh, and then we'll do theater so we can get a full shot. Perfect. Just do your cheat sheet there. Well, I have all their names memorized, I, you know, just in case I have this for reference. So before I get started, I want to say that getting to this level really in fine arts or in athletics or in activities is just an unbelievably remarkable accomplishment. And it, it motivates us as teachers to see students accomplish something like this. But also, we know that there's all sorts of schlepping to lessons and prep rehearsals and hitting coaches and all these sorts of things that have to happen and money and time and energy. And it's just not possible without unbelievable support at home. So thank you, parents. Thank you so much. All right, let's get started with our all-state musicians. Uh, first up, voice, Nicole Barris. Nicole Barris shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. Gilliam. Donnelly Black. Donnelly Black shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. Gilliam. Also voice. And Jillian Bowes, who cannot attend this evening due to another fine arts commitment for voice. Uh, Sophie Heiser. Sophie Heiser shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. Gilliam. Ian Joe. Violin. Ian Joe shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. Gilliam. David Rosales, who is not here this evening for clarinet. And Tim Zhang, oboe. Tim Zhang shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. Gilliam. The VHHS All-State Music students shake hands and stand for a picture with Fine Arts Director Drew Russell, Principal Dr. Gilliam, Associate Superintendent Brian Kelly, and School Board President Pat Grudy. Drew Russell goes back to the microphone. And next up, people who have provided me with much free entertainment for my family are all state theater students. Uh, first up is Mackenzie Furlett, who is in the cast. Mackenzie Furlett shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. Gilliam. Then, Sari Gluck, also in the cast. Sari Gluck shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. Gilliam. Orchestra, Kyle Johnson. Kyle Johnson shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. Gilliam. Unable to attend, on America. Uh, in the crew, Isabella Pineda. Isabella Pineda shakes hands with and receives a certificate from Dr. And Gilliam. Also, who, uh, a student who was in All State Music, David Rosales, who's unable to attend. The VHHS All-State Theater students shake hands and stand for a picture with Fine Arts Director Drew Russell, Principal Dr. Gilliam, Associate Superintendent Brian Kelly, and School Board President Pat Grudy. LHS kids that were in the, the festival, the theater fest, let's get a big picture of that. The District All-State Theater students are joined by staff members Kevin Holly and Jennifer Phelan. They all stand for a picture with Fine Arts Directors Drew Russell and Dustin Halavy, Principals Dr. Gilliam and Dr. Kulandes, Associate Superintendent Brian Kelly, and School Board President Pat Grudy.
Susan Gordon. Associate Superintendent, Brian Kelly. Thank you again. Congratulations to everyone. You guys are free to go if you want. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A majority of the audience leaves and the meeting continues with school board president Pat Grudy. Okay. Student school board representatives, who would like to go first? Okay. 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 Everyone's jumping at once. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. VHHS student okay. Brandon Kim. So congratulations to Lauren Liss and Jackson Konishnik on winning the team competition History Bowl Varsity Division and Lauren Liss for also winning the individual competition. So great job to Lauren and Jackson. Congratulations to James McDonald for being selected as a member of the All-State Academic Team. Uh, James places among the top 26 student athletes in all of Illinois. James will be recognized for his outstanding achievements on April 15th in Bloomington. Um, last Monday marked Vern Hill's first um, ever e-learning day. To make up for recent school cancellations, teachers provided assignments for their students to complete during their President's Day. Uh, we sent out a survey to the student body to collect feedback about the day itself. We received over 600 responses with the majority of students <coughs> saying their workloads um, were about two to three hours. Um, although over 80% of the responses said at, that at least one of their assignments was meaningful, 50% um, of students believed that the majority of their work seemed like busy work. 80% of students, 80% uh, of responses said that the e-learning day um, was much better than having to, add, having to add an extra day at the end of the year. Overall, students all put hard work into their assignments and our first e-learning day turned out to be a success. Um, Vernon Hills Juniors participated in the fifth annual history fair with the theme Tragedy and Triumph. Um, Hardworking students created documentaries, web websites, papers, and exhibits about their chosen events in Chicago's history. Um, ten projects were selected to move on to the region to regionals at Niles North High School, and hopefully our fellow students will move on to sectionals in the state. Um, two weeks ago, Vernon Hills had their turnabout. Um, students danced, played giant Django, played Bago, and ate cookies at the third annual turnabout. Um, this year, Vernon Hills had its first turnabout king and queen, Brett Sweeney and Rachel Wright. Last Thursday, uh, Vernon Hills Band had their winter band concert. The three ensembles performed great pieces for their audience. On Valentine's Day, VHHS Orchestra had their Valentine's Day concert. Concert and Philharmonic Orchestra performed great pieces to begin the concert. Senior soloist, soloist Ellie Zazak um, topped off the night with her amazing piece that she had, been, she had been working on for the entire year. And again, congratulations to all of our all-state musicians and theater students for all of their accomplishments this year. VHHS student Caitlin Dollar. We want to say congrats to the cheer team. A few weeks ago, the team placed first at the CSL championships, then went on to place fifth at sectionals and qualify for state. And at the state competition, the girls placed 17th. So congrats to all of them. Congrats also to the Palms team, who placed third at sectionals to advance to state a few weeks ago. At the state competition, the team placed 11th both days. So we're so proud of the girls for this accomplishment. Freshman Naya Hines broke the indoor school record for the long jump last week on her very first jump. Naya jumped an amazing 17 feet and 10 inches to break the record and win the meet. Senior Tyler Gonzalez also broke the school records for indoor track in the 200 meter, 400 meter, and 600 meter in their first two meets of the season. And one of those records was his own previous record. So we're so proud of our athletes that they are all so dedicated and performing so well even this early in the season. And we look forward to hearing about many more outstanding performances. Earlier this month, a group of VHHS students went to Snowball along with a group of students from LHS and Barrington High School. It was a great opportunity for the students to meet other people while participating in team activities and learning about healthy lifestyles. Talking to Hannah Rabinowitz, who was one of the leaders this year, she said that she loved planning everything and really bonding with the other students. She said they chose to focus on telling stories because no matter what, everyone has a story. She said all the stories were so different and so incredible, and she's sad it's over but so happy she had the experience. The VHHS Winter Play this year was The Complete History of America, which is a show covering 600 years of history in 90 minutes. The show was a comedy featuring singing, acting, and overall amazing performances from all the students. 
and due to the crazy stretch of cold days, the original three nights of performances was condensed into three performances on two nights, including one matinee show. But even with the shift in performance times, attendance was impressive at the shows, with an extra row of seats having to be added at the final performance. The spring play will be The Old Man and the Old Moon, a play written by Pigpen Theatre Company, one of whose members is BHHS alum Matt Nurnberger. Practices have officially started for the play, and everyone involved is very excited. Earlier this month, a talented group of VHHS students put on the annual 1X show. There were six skits involved, and all students performed, all student performed and directed. Students of all grades were involved, and the immense talent of the students was well displayed. Both shows are well attended, and the shows received positive feedback from both students and community members. In early January, VIP visited the students at Rockland Elementary School and performed skits, ran team building activities, and helped lead discussions with the students. The objective of the visit was to send messages about topics like bullying, healthy choices, and growing up. The students were engaged and had fun with their performances, and it is amazing to see so many VHHS students sharing their wisdom and making a difference in the lives of younger children. Earlier this month, a group of VHHS physics students went to visit third graders at Everett Elementary School in Lake Forest. The trip was organized by Mr. Rush, and the students helped act as advisors to the elementary school students on their catapult projects. Both Mr. Rush and the Science Department Chair, Mr. Procise, commented on the event, calling it a great opportunity and a way to bring the two schools together. The French two classes and pastry arts classes recently joined forces to create a multicultural experience for the students. The French two classes have been learning about French culture and food, and the pastry arts classes have been investigating cuisine around the world. The two classes united to make French pommiers and crepes together and combine their studies. It's so cool to see VHHS students and teachers encouraging such multicultural experiences and learning opportunities. LHS student Catherine Corliss. Okay. Um, so this passing weekend, um, Libertyville had its annual Turnabout Spirit Week, um, and this year's theme was Astroville. So Spirit Days included Space Jammy Monday, Total Eclipse Tuesday, Out of This World Wednesday, Attack of the Clones Thursday, and Fluorescent Friday. On Friday, the school had a blacklight assembly where the student body competed and played games for the Coveted Spirit Trophy, which the seniors took home, making up for their defeat to the juniors at the homecoming assembly earlier this year. Um, there were also performances by the Cheer and Palms teams, um, who wore additions to their uniforms to match the lighting. The next, uh, the next night, the students showed up to the dance, where they were treated with a coat check and plenty of water to stay hydrated. This year's turnabout also included a silent disco, where students could put on headphones and dance in the quiet. Um, this was a huge hit with the students, and it was packed all night long. Um, so in regards to the e-learning day, people have received it, um, the e-learning day that happened on the 18th, pretty well overall. The general opinion is that students and teachers alike preferred having the e-learning day to coming in for another day of school, whether on President's Day or at the end of the year. Um, teachers took the e-learning day in stride and provided students with helpful uh, supplemental activities for the upcoming week of class and it worked out perfectly for students who already had plans to either be out of town on family trips or on college visits. Um, so describing her experience with the e-learning day, Jessica, or Jessica Lee, a junior, uh, said that, I don't think teachers were given enough notice about it to develop another day for their lesson plan, but I, don't want, I didn't want to go to school on a designated day off. I think uh, giving us additional work let me feel a lot more productive. Um, considering that, we think that the first e-learning day uh, this year was a huge success. Um, since spring break, staff members have been visiting and talking to English classes throughout the school about the Green Dot program. Green Dot is a program that teaches students um, how to step in when they see bullying or any other uh, negative situation um, throughout the school. Uh, these uh, in-class trainings included brainstorming ideas about how to distract or intervene in different uh, scenarios and um, using three simple points of uh, delegate, direct or, direct, or distract. Um, students found that it was a very beneficial bystander training program. Um, students and staff members from Libertyville, Vernon Hills, and Barrington High School um, attended Snowball on Valentine's Day at Camp McLean in Wisconsin. Um, so as you all just heard, uh, the activity focused around the theme of telling your story. Um, students also enjoyed uh, participating in small and large group settings and also enjoyed the chance to play broom ball on the lake. Um, so as long as this winter has dragged on, LHS wants to give a huge thank you to all the staff who has been clearing the snow and the ice away so that people can be safe as they get to school. Um, and students are also grateful for simply having heat in their classrooms and that the later start times work better with um, circadian rhythms to alleviate the difficulty of getting up during winter mornings. 
Last week, there were two screenings of the documentary Angst, one at LHS and the other at the HHS. The documentary is designed to raise awareness about anxiety, and the event included a panel and an open discussion about issues that pertain to stress, anxiety, and depression, and how these issues are relevant to high schoolers today. Um, to speak to the LHS event, parents who attended found the event to be informative and described it as a good starting point to understand uh, what their kids may be going through, but don't wish to talk about at home. Um, moving on to athletics. Uh, we would like to congratulate the Thundercats, the fencing club, and team on winning at the JV Championship Tournament held at Marion Catholic High School in Woodstock that happened a couple weeks ago. The Thundercats competed against schools in the Great Lakes Fencing Conference, and they're very proud of their win. Um, swim team just finished their season. Uh, Libertyville had two athletes qualify for state in swimming and diving. Isaac Paul placed 33rd for diving, while Lauren Wong finished 32nd for the butterfly. The student body is very proud of these two athletes for their accomplishments. The girls basketball team also ended their season as the regional championships after falling to Lake Forest. Um, throughout the season, the girls collected many accolades, including uh, being the conference championships or conference champions, regional champions, and winners of the Libertyville Winter Classic. The team finished with a final record of 23 to 8, and they're very grateful for the fans that came out to support them. And not to be too redundant, but we want to give another huge congratulations to the two LHS wrestlers who um, placed at all state or at state. LHS student Matthew Wong. Okay, so for academics, course selection has started. Students who are freshmen, sophomore, or juniors have begun selecting their courses for the next year. One new option that's on students' minds is the Illinois Global Scholar Program. This program encourages students to take classes that will allow students to develop the skills needed to succeed in today's globalized world. To earn the certificate, scholars must take globally focused coursework, complete globally focused service learning, collaborate with others globally, and complete a performance task. It's still in its early stages, so not all globally centered courses will count towards the certificate, but students are looking forward to how the program may keep growing. So for clubs and activities, the LHS Theater Program just had their long-anticipated comedy sports performance. Comedy sports is a competitive and interactive improv show. The, por the performers are divided into two teams, red and blue, and compete to get the most audience, lauder, or applause. There were two snow days, and both of them went incredibly well. While the performers were initially two show <laughs> days, and both of them went incredibly well. While the per performers were initially worried about how well the show would go, their hours of practice clearly showed and certainly paid off. The academic decathlon team placed second at regionals, qualifying to compete at state at the Northeastern Illinois University. The team of 10 is coached by Mr. Busing, and they're all looking forward to the upcoming challenge. In the last month, the Science Olympiad team has had great performances across the board at the Huntley Invitational and the Loyola Academy Invitational. At Huntley, Libertyville placed second in circuit lab, third in water quality, fifth in protein modeling, fifth in astronomy, fifth in mousetrap vehicle, 5th in Ride It Do It, 6th in Disease Detectives, 6th in geo Geologic Mapping, 7th in Boom Lever, 7th in Fossils, 9th in Forensics, 9th in Fermi Lab, 9th in Herpetology, and 10th in Sounds of Music. At Loyola Academy, Libertyville placed 1st in Water Quality, 4th in Herpetology, 7th in Right Stuff, 8th in Geologic Mapping, 10th in Astronomy, Disease Detectives, and Fermi Questions. They also debuted the Mission Possible Rube Goldberg machine for the first time, earning 6th place at a tournament with over 40 teams present. The team is now preparing for the regional tournament on March 9th to qualify for the state tournament this April, which will be held at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. The Libertyville math team also had an incredible showing last Saturday at the ICTM regional math competition. The team managed to place third, with the freshman sophomore eight-person team winning first place in qualifying for state. The team is already hard at work, preparing for the North Suburban Math League conference meet this March. The Model United Nations Club had their winter travel conference in January at Columbia University in New York. The small group of 12 who attended had an overwhelmingly positive experience in exploring the city and the university campus, and they are grateful that two, their two advisors, Mr. Wall and Ms. Bosman, were able to come. Everyone dealt, did well in their committees, with topics ranging from Avatar to Brexit, and six students got awards. Drew Hopkins received a Best Delegate, while Allison McLean and Alice Lilydell and Madeline Coons received Outstanding Delegate. Catherine Corliss received an honorable mention, and Cooper and Loonsbury received a verbal commendation. Finally, this passing week, the LHS Jazz Ensemble and the Jazz Lab Band formed four residents of Libertyville Manor, both of them <coughs> performing their swing pieces wonderfully, and the residents loved it. Uh, Matthew, who was on that first place uh, water quality team? Uh, I was one of the members. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right, great job, everybody.
And in, in between all of that, there was time to do your regular schoolwork, right? <laughs> all right, great job, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna make one other comment. Um, earlier this uh, month in our committee meeting, we had a chance to tour the new pool in Libertyville. Um, and I don't know about the rest of you guys, but after you know five or more years of planning, starting to finally see this thing, um, it was actually an amazing experience. Uh, no question, the, the first uh, the first feeling you get is, it is huge. <laughs> um, and uh, it is going to be just a great asset, I think, not only for our own um, campus in Libertyville, Libertyville, but I hope for all the residents in town as well. And I think once people see it, um, it will clearly be a facility that was well worth waiting for. So I want to say a special thanks to you two guys, because I know how hard you're working on that as well as all these other projects um, and also to the Gilbane team um, who gave us a great tour and uh, you, you also get a, a special appreciation for frankly how complicated that kind of construction project is and, and the talent that it takes to really make it all happen so I just want to make a public thanks to the, the Gilbane team and all the hard work that they're doing there so it's getting exciting it will still be ready this spring uh, which takes us right up until what, June 20th? June 20th. Okay. Um, but uh, no, great job so far. All right. All right. Uh, superintendent's report. Sir. Thank you, Pat. Um, we do have good news to cover from January um, that we didn't cover at the last board meeting and some from February. Um, so, at the beginning of January, D128 Special Olympians um, competed in the snowshoeing at the area winter games at Hoffman Estates High School. Andrew McCarthy, uh, Nathan Ferreira, Haley Dunbar, Sean Cranon, and Alex Akende collected three golds, one silver, four bronze, and a fourth and fifth place ribbons. Haley and Nathan um, qualified for the state games and competed there. Nathan placed second in the 50 meter snowshoe. Our LHS Jazz Combo, Lab Band, and Jazz Ensemble, along with directors Matt Carnson and Dave Ness, performed at the North Shore Jazz Fest on Saturday, January 19th. All three groups received the rating of one, which is the highest score that is given. LHS students Thomas Power in guitar and John Power in drums both received solo awards. Students re received clinics from professional musicians Victor Garcia, Vince Johnson, and Dave Tippett. Vernon Hills High School English teacher Terry Young received the Stanford University Teacher Tribute. Kelsey Carrito is a uh, Vernon Hills 2018 grad was given the opportunity to formally acknowledge an educator who played a significant role in her intellectual, academic, and personal development. The certificate reads in part that Tara Young is recognized by Stanford University for exceptional teaching. Your dedication as an educator and a mentor has contributed to the future of your students, Stanford University, and your community. Also included on the, on the certificate is part of the nomination that was written by Kelsey. Congratulations to Tara. The following students were named January True Wildcat Award recipients for the ways in which they embody the daring mission and the life, live the life of a Wildcat. Olivia Cherry, Paula Magnazuski, Amanda Page, Enrique Aguirre, Olivia Gauvin, Alexander Black, David Lee, and Anna Schuller. Vernon Hills High School art students and their teacher, Allison Malloy, once again participated in the Memory Project. And if you remember from last year, they came and presented at a board meeting. So the Memory Project, again, is a profitable, charitable, nonprofit organization that invites art teachers, art students, and solo artists to help cultivate global kindness by creating portraits for children around the world who have faced substantial challenges such as violence, war, extreme poverty, neglect, and loss of parents. So since 2004, we have created more than 130,000 portraits for children in 47 countries. A larger number of Vernon Hills student artists were, a were able to participate this year, due in part to the funding from an innovation grant from the District 128 Foundation for Learning. So this year's portraits were sent to children in the Philippines, Bangladesh, and Myanmar, and Syria. Malloy plans to have 25 portraits completed this spring and seven more from the VHHS AP class for the United States of America. The following VHHS juniors and seniors participated in the project. Um, going to the Philippines, Lee Jadila, Drew Laser, Rachel Hayden, Sasha Shore, and Kiono, Kiona, Kiona Castro. For Bangladesh, Leah Hayden, Sneha Akurati, Olivia Sheldon, 
Hannah Rabinowitz, Rachel Hayden, and then Allison Moy, the teacher. For Syria, Lily May. So congratulations to those students. So some more good news, still just a repeat um, about James McDonald, Fern Hills High School senior, that he was selected to the IHSA All-State Academic Team. Again, this honor places James among the top 26 student athletes in the state of Illinois. Congratulations to him. LHS senior Maggie Evers has been named the 2018 Daughters of the American Revolution Good Citizen Award winner. And fellow LHS senior Thomas Pearson has been named the 2018-19 Sons of the American Revolution Good Citizen Award winner. Twelve Vernon Hills students received the February Ellen Swick Cougar Class Act Award. This month's honorees were Natalia Aloha, Hannah Rabinowitz, Avery Hessel. I'm, I'm sorry, could you repeat that last name? Avery Hessel. <laughs> oh, thank you. Tyler Clean, Farnoosh Ganjapur, Rachel Wright, Rebecca Agnew, Hela Abdelzarek, um, Navintha Santu Kumar, Drishka Asher, Tyler Tran, and Alexis Garcia. And in February, the LHS students were named True, True Wildcats. Sophia Thompson, Quinn Ramstead, Isabel Turco, Kyle Bow, Chase Miller, Kara Cannon, Allie Hardy, Peyton Gowas, Michael O'Brien, um, Elias Anderson, and Elisa Waddick, CeCe Schneider, and Jalen Pitts. Um, artwork by 10 D128 student art our artists were selected from the 25 best of the best works from the LHS and Vernon Hills High School Art Departments for the Illinois High School Art Exhibition, the general exhibition for 2018-19. Um, this is one of the Illinois' premier high school art exhibitions featuring student visual artworks from high schools across northern Illinois. Um, the general exhibition is a best of the best competition developed by teachers to recognize high school students' artistic excellence. Um, the students that were selected for the exhibit in Vernon Hills, Sneha Akarati, Autumn Maytush, Lily Meng, Irvi Acharya, Anne-Marie Landis, and from Libertyville, Kelsey Collins, Bridget Wilson, Jackie Vu, Le Leanne Tam, Tam, and Emily Detlaff. On February 22nd, Vernon Hills FCCLA club members competed at the regional competition at Harper College. All students received gold or silver medals and qualified for state in their respective areas, which included cookie decorating, salad demonstration, and children's literature storytelling. The Vernon Hills High School state qualifiers are Andrea Mata, Adriana Alonzo, Austin Maskey, Myra Jaramillo, Rachel Wright, Diamond Williams, Emily Viatoli, Riley Goldberg, Alexander Schmidt, Abby Kamai, Katie Hoffman, Brittany Jamie, and Lauren D. Pietro. And that concludes the Superintendent's Good News Report. Thank you. Moving on to pool and parking update, Mark and Dan. Director of Facilities, Mark Koopman. Hi, well, since you last toured the pool, um, we've had some progress. Uh, They've uh, been working on the interior masonry. We've completed all the interior uh, masonry walls in the east section mechanical rooms. Um, they've also started uh, covering the columns in the main pool area. Uh, so on the west end, those columns are done. They're working on the south uh, columns at this, uh, this time this week. Um, they, um, we continued um, the installation of the forms for the bleachers. So when you tour the pool, now from end to end, the forms are, the stands are all up and you can see the forms coming together. There'll be a couple weeks more of work there. Um, we started setting electrical equipment, um, the main distribution panels and that in the uh, mechanical room, the electrical room. And the big thing is we got all the equipment out of the pool vessel uh, removed the ramp and cleaned the vessel and the vessel as of today is full of water so we are doing a leak test uh, at this time so for approximately three days we're going to check the water make sure we don't have any leaks and move from there. The drain the gallons as a whole. 
approximately 700,000. Assistant Superintendent for Finance, Dan Stanley. Uh, and just an FYI, with water in it, it does look uh, definitely smaller uh, once you add the water. Um, in terms of our budget, we're, we're, we're a tad over half spent in the budget, but we're going to be spending a lot more money in the next few months. So uh, just, but, but as, of, as we're sitting right now, everything is on track budget wise. You don't have to spend it, um, We understood, yep. We're gonna spend almost all of it, just, never mind. Okay, any questions on the pool? Nope. All right, you go to the door. Next, we have an update on the uh, LHS and VHHS major capital projects. Update on the process, Dan? Yeah, um, so I don't know if you can tell Jeff is over here. He is more tired than he looks. Um, it's been a very, very busy uh, couple of weeks for Gilbane and for the district in getting these out to bid and coming in. We had uh, two, bid two bid openings so far. Uh, one the, this past Tuesday, which two of our board members, uh, Casey and Lisa, were able to uh, be there and kind of see what that really looks like. And um, it was uh, interesting to see. So we had a number of trades open on Tuesday. We had um, pretty early on, we knew and we've been talking about um, this at, at several meetings um, there's a busy bid market happening right now and so there's a lot of contractors are being asked to bid on various projects and so a lot of them have been asking for more time and so we we really want to have a good showing of bidders and so we've been trying to accommodate that as much as we can so we've had a number of bids move as you know Casey and Lisa saw we had some that are moved, moved to this past Friday uh, we still have two more two more packages this week Two more packages this week, one Tuesday, one Friday? Yes. Yep, so, so we're still not, we thought maybe at this point we would have all of the bids in, we don't actually have them all in at this time. Um, so that's just kind of what's been happening. So in terms of the numbers that we have, um, we, we still need to have Gilbane be able to kind of go through the scope and look at the bids. So we have, we really have the numbers that we have, and the, the short story is everything looks like it's within budget um, for the project, but what, Gilbane still has to do is go through the scope reviews with each of the bidders and make sure with the lowest bidder that their scope, that the scope that we requested is comprehensively represented in the budget. For example, was it this morning we had one of the low bids? Um, the electrician realized they had made an error and they asked to have their bid withdrawn. So that was the low bid for the electrician that they had theirs withdrawn. And you know, we kind of had the sense, because when you read the numbers and you hear one that's like a lot lower than the other one, you kind of think, oh, maybe there's something weird there. So we've been trying to take those things into account. Um, so <clears throat> they still need to kind of go through their process, because there could be another bit in there that, you know, once the, once the contractor kind of realizes the scope, maybe there's something out there. So we want to make sure we have that time uh, to do that effectively. So um, where it stands right now is, um, and the other, the other, Quite honestly, the thing that we, we need to do um, is really trying to compare our apples to apples. So when we had estimated these projects, we really estimated Vernon Hills and LHS separate. Like we, we had a different design teams doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, one thing, and we decided to bid it together to save our economy. One thing we didn't really do at that time is put the put the bid. I mean, we did the totals together. We didn't put each of the trades together to then compare. Okay, we got the electric bid. How does that compare to what we estimated? Well, we kind of two different numbers that we need to combine. So we had to kind of, we have to kind of spend some time organizing that and comparing to see where we're coming in over and under in various months. Cause you're always gonna have some bids are over, some bids are under and all of that. Um, but at this point we do look like that we're within budget. Um, uh, and it looks like that we perhaps would be able to do alternate one, which was the faculty workroom at, at VHS in the courtyard and still be within budget. Um, but we, um, I can't say all of that for sure until we really kind of dig and review the numbers and, because that really the biggest bulk of the rest of the bids happened on Friday afternoon which was like just yesterday business wise so we're still kind of working through all of those things um, so at this point what we had talked about several meetings up to this far which is now we're kind of realizing is if you notice we don't have any bids to approve at this meeting which you know, for the community, like we've been talking about our schedule and that we would look at bids today. However, we, we do feel that um, we need to spend a little, Gilbane needs to have the opportunity to spend a little more time to flush these, flush these bids out. So at this point, what we would look at uh, recommending is having scheduling a special board meeting on Monday, March 4th. 
sorry, sorry. Uh, fourth, uh, to accept uh, as many of the bids as we can. Um, and then if there are still some straggling that we would, we would do them perhaps at the um, FNF meeting, or that night, the, the March 11th, which was our normal committee meeting, scheduling a special meeting to um, accept any ones that they can't really get through in the next week. Is that, is that an accurate statement, Jeff? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so um, I, th I think that was everything that I, that I think of that I have prepared. So I don't know, if any questions that you have at this point or um, questions about the process? Jeff's here can answer a lot of questions. No, I just, I just, you know, ultimately you want to get it right. And you want to get all the efficiencies operationally that you can, if you can get those through the two schools and the two bids and, you know, that's part of the reason that we said, hey, let's look at these together um, because it makes sense to do these projects. So, um, you know, I'm all for it. Let's move it along. But at the same time, I'm fine with basically taking the time, making sure we get the right bids um, with the right viewpoint as it relates to the work that's being done, et cetera. Yeah, to be clear, so what we're not faced with, we're not facing the bids that are coming in. It looks like that we are over anything that we've estimated. So that that's that's the real positive thing to take at this point. The question will be kind of how close are we to that line. That's something we really need to still get a better handle on in terms of looking at all of those components. Any other surprises or anything as going through this process that you didn't um, that you didn't think would happen or anything? Generally, we're very pleased with the bids. I mean, the contractors were all pre-qualified with Gilbane. We've done work with virtually all of them in the past, and uh, most of the low bidders that are very good firms, so we're, we're really confident going forward we're going to have the right people doing the work. Thanks. Any issues with the availability of resources? I mean, is it a hot market? That... It's a hot market. I mean, um, the good thing about this project is it goes through the summer into the, in, through the school year, so contractors were interested in that because it's not, not a summer slammer, as, as we call it. So um, other than trying to get some of the work done at Vernon Hills and get the demolition done at Libertyville, um, this is an attractive project, so we're pretty confident that people have the manpower that they need. Okay. All right, so March 4th. March 4th, we, March 4th, we would like to have a special meeting to approve as many of these bids as we will have ready from Gilbane, which we, we anticipate would be a bulk of them for sure. Um, at the March 4th special meeting. And how much ahead of time will we have to review that stuff? Not that there's, I mean, we're not going to do any kind of technical review with them. Um, you know, I mean, I, some of it, Gilbane and I have to kind of touch base with numbers, but I would love to be able to get you something if I can, you know, midweek, maybe a little, maybe Thursday or so to get you something. So you've got, you know, because last, last time I looked at, I believe March 4th is a week from today. It is, it is. Uh, so, um, it's a tight timeline for Gilbane too. They know that, but they also recognize it's important to get the, the get contractors on notice that we're ready because really the, some of the work they like to start spring break. Uh, I, I just say, hey, get it right. So like I, I get said it before, right get it right. right. Committee because we do have a committee meeting, meeting the week later, right? Right. You know, unless I'm missing some, I'm not sure that one week's going to make a huge difference. Yeah, I just I just need to be able to give you kind of a financial analysis that I, I don't really have available for you at this time. But I'm, you know, really working on this. Well, you, get get the, you get the gist. Do what you need to do, and but you, do what's right. your thought? I mean, if, if we if we pushed even to the committee meeting, is that a is that a bad idea, or what do you think? Yeah, I'd like to get contractors on board as early as we can, so they can get shop drawings going and get material and equipment ordered. Um, you know, but we you know the packages that we got Friday were some of the important ones: the structure, the masonry, the um, electrical. They may take a little more time, so if we, we may have to push it a week, and I'm fine with that. I don't think it's going to affect us overall on the schedule. Trust your objection, you guys get along or not. But I mean, if it's meaningful to get some contractors going, I'd rather get it going, but you, I trust your judgment on We're prioritizing which packages we're talking to first so we can go through those packages and get them resolved. And if, if we can get the structure and, and probably the mechanical and electrical work, I would like to come in, but. We'll, we'll revisit that. You know, again, we have, I think, like Dan is saying, we need, we need the overall package of the finances so you can make an informed decision. Did you get a post that meeting Friday for open meeting? Uh, Special meeting? I mean, 48 hours ahead of time, so it's probably just going to be Of those of us that are here, is anyone, I'm not, I'm out of town on that night, so 
Are the rest of you available? I'm available. I'm available. I'm available. I'm available. If you needed, I could phone in, but yeah. I think as long as we have a forum, we should be okay. We should know some by Wednesday or Thursday this week to make that determination then, right? I think that's all right. And Dan, will we be able to see the whole picture? I know it's still kind of preliminary, but I mean, we'll be able to see this thing in, in total. That's my goal. So, so you see, so before we, we, we've spent a lot of time on the estimates and looking at the numbers and what's included, what's not included. My goal is to give you like this is the the total and all everything, okay. nothing left out number. Um, okay. So, good. All right. That I'm sure is keeping you guys extremely busy. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for coming. Uh, Mark hasn't even had time to shake. I mean, that's how that's how bad it is. Okay. Either of you, by the way. I got a trim. Trim. Okay. Um, I think we still. We have um, three FOIA requests. Um, first one was from January 28th from uh, Amanda Marquez, and that was handled by um, myself um, with an hour spent on it. February 13th, we had a FOIA request from Jennifer Marquez. She had a couple requests on that one. Um, time spent, again, by myself. Um, it was six hours on that FOIA request. February 18th um, was another FOIA request by Jennifer Marquez on um, some communication records. Time spent on that was um, by me again, um, an hour spent on that one. And Brian, what's your feel? Are we going to get a continuing um, list of these? And this looks like a, a huge fishing expedition, frankly, to me. Um, at this point, you know, we're trying to um, abide by the FOIA laws and the FOIA requests, and we are doing um, everything that we believe and our attorneys believe is correct in answering to the FOIA request. So, uh, you know, we're doing everything that we can to the best of our ability. Okay. All right. Um, anything else? That's it. Okay. All right. The consent vote agenda is listed. This is what we reviewed earlier this month in committee. Um, can I ask for a motion to approve the consent vote agenda as listed? I motion to approve the consent vote agenda as listed. Second. Yeah. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Batson. Aye. Rudy. Aye. Hassel. Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Luce. Aye. Rudy. Aye. All right. Motion carries. Facilities and finance, um, Chairperson Luce. And we have four items here that I think are going to require an action on our part. We reviewed these in committee, and the first is the 2018 Compreh Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. It was a little bit delayed for members of the committee because of the information we had to get from the state. But, Dan, you want to talk about that a little bit? And yep, it was delayed based on, and it delayed pretty much every district in the state, but because we have the capper, which is kind of an additional layer in comprehensiveness. Uh, it, that required uh, more time. So it's here, ready for approval. And, uh, yeah. Okay. All right, so do I have a motion to approve the Comprehensive Annual Fan Financial Report? So moved. Second. Any questions or discussion? Just again, I'll highlight, Scott, we talked about this in detail in the committee meeting in case anyone thinks we just went through it in depth, yes. Okay, roll call. Rudy. Aye. Hassel. Aye. Luce. Aye. Lundstedt. I'm sorry. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Okay. Mobile Makers Addendum Vernon Hills High School. Again, something we discussed in committee uh, last year. Uh, the board approved a contract with Mobile Makers for uh, the curriculum for the Mobile Makers classroom curriculum. Curriculum. Thank you. Sorry. Um, and so Vernon Hills is looking to add that for next year, and so we requires. Also, to enter into an agreement with them. The nice thing is, we can just amend the current contract we have with LHS and we'll loop Vernon Hills in, so it's very, very simple. And so we can keep all the same legal terms. We don't have to negotiate them again. So it's pretty, pretty simple. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the addendum for uh, the Mobile Makers program at Vernon Hills? So moved. Second. I'm willing to bet that's a pretty popular course, actually. We have a number of, of offerings in computer science, so if that is one that is of interest to students, um, yeah. and, and, so. and we've got a lot of students taking the AP computer science courses as well. Great. Any questions or dialogue or? All right. Can we uh, have a roll call, please? 
Hassel? Aye. Moose? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Rooney? Aye. The third item is bid recommendations for 2019 masonry restorations work. So this is brickwork that's part of our ongoing capital um, improvement project. So this is separate from these larger projects that are coming in reserve. This is part of regular maintenance that is required on both buildings. We review these bids. Um, is there anything else to add on these? We went through this as a committee. Uh, yeah, we would just like to make a recommendation uh, that the board accept um, the bid from Grove Masonry uh, Maintenance Incorporated on uh, Valsup, Illinois, uh, in the amount of $880,000 uh, for the work to be done at Libertyville and Vernon Hills <coughs> High School. We have a motion to approve the bid as presented by Mark. So moved. Second. Pick one. <laughs> Any dialogue or questions? Discussion? Roll call, please. Luce? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Hassel? Aye. And the last item for a uh, decision here is disposal of obsolete equipment. Um, this is a washer and dryer. We talked about this at committee too. We, we did and the reason, so similar to PMP, when, if something comes in after our FNF committee, but something that we really, really feel it needs to get on the agenda for approval. Did we have something else uh, on that committee? We, we did, um, that was a planer uh, that you had approved in the consent agenda. Got it. Uh, earlier this meeting. And so the, the, this equipment, rather than having to wait another month, it's just gonna sit there and they would really like to get rid of it. Uh, so that's really why we have it there. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Sure um, do I have a motion to uh, vote for the disposal of the equipment? So moved. Second. Any discussion, dialogue? Roll call. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Hassel? Aye. Luce? Aye. Anything for other? Okay. Uh, program personnel, Chairperson Batson. Thank you, Dr. Grudy. We have uh, two items here. Um, curriculum course name changes. Uh, there's two actual changes, a, uh, moving from AP Seminar to AP Seminar <coughs> hyphen English, and from AP Research to AP Research hyphen English. We're recommending this change uh, to the curriculum because a number of universities uh, recognize the AP Seminar and AP Research courses um, for elective credit rather than the English credit that we award. Um, and so to clarify to universities and to those reviewing transcripts that this is an English credit offered at our schools, we're just adding that English to the name to an existing College Board AP course that we offer, two courses. This, this comes up every once in a while where there's a name and there's an AP and we're, we're having to, I won't say argue with a university or a college, but have discussions about their interpretation, correct? Uh, many universities view AP courses differently and award different kinds of credit for those courses. AP seminar and research are really interesting interdisciplinary courses and they are offered at different high schools for different kinds of credit. It can be social studies credit, it can be science credit. So this one is a little bit unique in that regard because it is something that can be interdisciplinary and, and offered in different ways at high schools, more so than some of the other AP courses are. And this doesn't change anything with the curriculum yeah. of the course. It's just the name. Just, just the name to yeah. better identify what that, that yeah. really, what it means to us, yeah. Yeah, basically. Okay. All right. Any other, um, can we have a um, motion in a second, please? I motion to approve the curriculum <coughs> course name changes. Second. Any further questions, comments? No. Do we have a roll call, please? Batson? Aye. Grudy? Aye. Hassel? Aye. Luce. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Thank you. That motion passes. We have a motion for employment of employees. We have a, a short list of um, some coaches and some ESP uh, staff replacements. These all came in after our PMP committee meeting, and we'd like to get these a, approved at this board meeting. Okay. We have a motion, please. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments on this? Okay. Thank you. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Grudy? Aye. Hassel? Aye. Luce? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. 
Uh, anything under other for anybody? Okay, that concludes the uh, uh, okay. program of personnel. All right, thank you very much. All right, no property, no CEDL, no IASB. I actually do have a, a quick IASB okay. just as um, all of you have gotten this uh, little booklet in your, your packets and just as a reminder, this is the information that was voted on at the meeting in November that, uh, that, we, that I attended on our behalf and uh, hope to attend on our behalf again in no November, but uh, these are the resolutions and things that uh, were agreed to and will be, are typically reviewed every year and added to or removed, but just so you have a copy of that. Just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Thank All you. right, thanks. Thank you. Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, good night everybody. Thanks.